Hi, everyone. So the scripture portion for this morning is from Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. Paul, an apostle, sent not from men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers and sisters with me to the churches in Galatia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really not gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preached to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Am I trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I do not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Kim. Sorry, I tried to skip you. And now for Abraham. Uh, thank you so much, Kim. Thank you, Tina. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, before we look into God's word, uh, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you and praise you for this wonderful time of fellowship you've given us. Lord, we believe that you have accepted our offering of praise. Lord, even as we open our hearts to receive your word now, I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will minister to us this morning. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your written word. Lord, I pray that even as we meditate on it, you will bring to light the areas where we need to correct ourselves, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you will give us the grace to humbly submit to your will, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, good morning once again. Uh, today we are having uh, a cafe-style service. After the introductory talk, we will uh, split into uh, different rooms uh, where we can continue to uh, discuss and deliberate on this passage that was just read to us by Kim. Uh, two weeks back, Mike got us started uh, on this letter to Galatians and the theme that we will be meditating on is living for God and not for rules. And today specifically, we will be uh, looking at good and bad uh, church leaders. And just to give you a brief background, uh, this letter was <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the wake up call. Yeah. So, as I was mentioning, uh, this letter was written uh, approximately uh, during AD 49. And uh, whenever it comes to letters, uh, there is always some controversy surrounding the authorship of this of the letter. Uh, like for instance, like Hebrews, we don't know whether Paul has written or somebody else has written. But when it comes to Galatians, okay, uh, there is no doubt that this letter was written by Paul. And in the in the closing chapters, uh, this is what Paul says, okay, see with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand, okay, just trying to prove the authenticity. Of this letter that he is the one uh, who has who has spent this letter and the purpose of this letter uh, was basically to address the controversy that arose in the early church okay uh, because <clears throat> most of the the early converts uh, were from greeks and there were portion of people of the early converts who were from 
Jewish Christian backgrounds, and there were a, there was a confusion with respect to the rituals that the Jewish Christians were imposing on the Gentiles. If this message was in Hindi, okay, uh, maybe the title of this sermon could could have been "Galatiyon ka galatiya sudarne ke liye ye patra likha gaya hai." For those who understand Hindi, will will know. Uh, the the letter was basically written to uh, correct the uh, the the error that was there in the teaching in the uh, region of Galatia. Okay, so as we read through the scripture portion, Paul is basically emphasizing the three major themes. One is the authenticity of the gospel, and second is the superiority of the gospel, and third the, is the the freedom that is there in the gospel. Uh, Paul and Barnabas had visited uh, these places in their first missionary journey, and uh, there were fellowships that were found in the region of Iconium, Lystra, Derby. And as they completed their as they completed their mission trip and they came back, okay, they got a report about a false teaching that is being spread. Okay, and people accused Paul of diluting the gospel so that it becomes more presentable uh, to all the Gentiles. And to address this, Paul himself takes it on him uh, to 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 address this issue. And we will go verse by verse. Uh, this is a small passage, and we'll run through it, and then we'll come to the conclusion. Verse one. It says. <clears throat> Paul, an apostle, not sent not from men nor by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from dead, and all the brothers and sisters with me. Okay, uh, Paul, when he's addressing himself or when he's identifying himself, he's identifying himself as an apostle. And now we all know the meaning of apostle. Apostle basically means a person who's been sent, who's been sent on a specific mission okay and when you look at all the early apostles okay most of them were called by jesus christ when he was on this earth doing his ministry okay but paul had a unique encounter with christ on the road to damascus and there christ chose him uh, to be the apostle to gentiles and so he's at the outset he's laying out his credentials that he's not been appointed by a group of men or by a man, but Christ Jesus himself who raised from dead has appointed him to be an apostle. And his work is also validated by all the brothers and sisters who are closely working with him. And then he goes on to say, to the churches in Galatia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age. And this is a common thread that you will find in all the epistles that are written by Apostle Paul. Grace and peace to you. Okay. As some people say, because of the grace that is extended by God to us, okay, we have peace with him. Okay. And that is the reason Paul keeps talking about this thing. Grace and peace to you. And over here he says that God in his divine plan, had already chosen Christ Jesus to die for our sins. Okay, That was his mission to save all the mankind okay? through the death and resurrection of Christ. Okay, And here it's saying to rescue us from the present evil age. That means we have not been taken away. We continue to live in this world. Okay, But now we pledge our allegiance to God. Okay. We no longer say that we belong to the world. Okay, We say that we belong to Christ Jesus who died for us. Okay. Coming to verse 6. Okay. It says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which really is no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to forward the gospel of Christ. One thing uh, that you will notice as you read through the letter of Galatians, okay, 
is the raw emotion that keeps coming out as paul writes uh, to to the churches in galatia the concern that he has for uh, the brothers and sisters in galatia the 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 love that he has for them and we keep seeing that okay and sometimes uh, he becomes angry also on them and is acting out of love for them and he doesn't want them to get deluded he doesn't want to, them to get lost okay and here is like i'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting the one who has called you okay and paul is saying that there is no other gospel that there is no other gospel apart from what i have preached you as romans 10 9 says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart you will be saved that's all okay but over here okay many of the christians uh, that were there were from jewish background and because of the the culture that they were brought in okay they they had the the law with them they were following that law for all of their lives and now because they had received jesus christ into their life there was a new form liberty and they didn't know how to mix this two things together they thought both are required for salvation and hence they imposed this conviction that they had in their hearts on the gentiles as well okay and it was pertaining to some rituals and uh, more specifically in the letter to galatians it was pertaining to circumcision okay that all the gentiles uh, if they believe in god that was not sufficient and they had to be circumcised for their salvation experience to be complete and that was completely contrary to what paul was trying to preach all the time and he was telling it is through grace that you are saved you cannot earn your salvation okay it is a free gift of god that is what paul was trying to say but here people were trying to bring in an aspect of doing which would make them earn the gift of salvation which god had so freely given and paul is disturbed by this and he is saying this is perversion of gospel okay you're undermining the power of the cross the you're undermining the sacrifice of jesus christ he didn't come so that you could do some additional things and then again earn your salvation god in his divine plan had already chosen that jesus christ should die for your sin and my sin and that he be resurrected let's move ahead okay and in verse 8 it says but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one that was preached to you let them be under god's curse as we have already said so now i say again if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted let them be under god's curse okay what powerful words okay not only me even if angels come and speak to you okay let them be under god's curse and what he is telling is let them be cut off from god let them be eternally condemned i mean that is the punishment that paul is calling out on those people who are trying to present a different gospel other than what they had preached and he is repeating the same thing again in verse 9 as we have already said so now i say again if anybody is preaching to you any other gospel then what you have accepted let them be under god's curse let them be under god's curse so we see here paul's heart goes out for the people okay he is pleading with them that do not give up on the early message that you received you did you don't have to do anything okay just believe and accept okay there was law okay but the law did not guarantee salvation okay it only pointed towards christ okay all the sacrifices that they did okay it was only reminder for their sin it never had the capacity to blot away their transgression okay it was only when the perfect sacrifice in christ jesus that was offered on the cross of calvary were they redeemed were they saved and Paul is trying to tell them that that is the gospel. 
and if anybody else is preaching any other gospel apart from that okay let them be eternally doomed let them be cut away from christ okay in verse 10 am i now trying to win the approval of human beings or of god or i'm trying to please people if i if i am still trying to please people i would not be a servant of god paul was clear in his mind that if there was somebody whom he had to please it was god himself it didn't mean that he would go on hurting more people that he pleased god that was not the intention okay that he will do whatever it takes to correct people if they are having wrong notions about christ if they had wrong teachings he will go and correct it but christ his command his message takes precedence over maintaining good relationships okay because anything that is built on wrong foundation will fail okay only what is built on the foundation of truth will last and and paul again is emphasizing in verse 11 and 12 i want you to know brothers and sisters the gospel that i preached is not of human origin i did not receive it from any man nor was i taught it rather i received it by revelation from jesus christ paul in that sense was a very unique person okay he never actually interacted with jesus christ okay it was only through that encounter on the road of damascus he came to know the lord and when he heard that voice the divine voice he submitted he yielded his life to that call and he kept on saying that i have not been taught god himself has given me this message okay and i am accountable to it and that's what i am sharing i am bringing it to you okay so the, the coming to the topic that we have in a good and bad church leaders uh, i am not here to like a uh, draw up a comparison like good church leaders like these are one two three four characteristics bad church leaders these are one two three four characteristics because i know each one of us have the potential to err on either side okay if a person is bad okay he will not even become a member rather, let alone be a church leader okay so coming to paul okay we'll just look at the things that he did okay uh, and maybe there is something that you and i can learn okay the first thing when he got to know that there was false thing false teaching being propagated Uh, in the region of galatia he didn't keep quiet he acted immediately okay how many of us okay would do the same thing okay when we see wrong around us wrong things being spoken wrong things being said wrong things being done okay many of us would choose to remain silent okay because we say why should we get involved in this thing okay but when paul saw something wrong was being taught okay he immediately called it out okay and he did the next best thing okay the best thing would have been to go there meet people talk to them maybe that was not possible okay he didn't have the technology so he did the next best thing he wrote a letter to them okay it takes time it takes effort okay he did and he did what was possible for him okay and second thing that we see here he came straight to the point after the after establishing his credentials and uh, the normal salutation he comes to the point people say no the the shortest distance between point a to point b is a straight line okay paul did not beat around the bush okay he came and addressed the issue okay he was not diplomatic about it because this was something that was fundamentally wrong so he did not sugarcoat it okay what was wrong he called out called it out and he did not care 
whether these people will invite him again, okay, whether his aid will get stopped, okay, those were none of his concerns, okay, because he knew that he was divinely appointed by God, and the mandate that was given to him by God, he was he was accountable to that. So what people said about him, uh, and what will the repercussion or the repercussions will be, he 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 did not think about those things. He just went ahead and discharged his duties. Maybe these are the things we can learn. Uh, as I said, there are, I mean, you cannot categorize people into good leaders and bad leaders. All of us, okay, start off on a good note. Okay. And somewhere people, when they get disillusioned, here people, they didn't say that do not accept Jesus Christ. These Judaizers who are trying to propagate the rituals, they didn't say do not believe in Jesus. They said believe in Jesus, but also you need to undergo this rituals. Okay. It be begins with small deviation. Okay. And as you keep progressing in life, okay, you see people being moving far and far away from the truth. Okay. Um, many of us would have heard this example of one degree deviation. Okay. Uh, if not, I'll just refresh our memories. Okay. One degree on a protractor is, is barely visible. Okay. But with one degree deviation, if you, if you travel a distance of one feet, okay, you will miss the destination by 0.2 inches. It's barely perceptible. But if you travel a distance of 100 yard, you are away from the destination by 5 feet. Okay. And if you were supposed to travel from Chennai to Bangalore and if you wanted to hit LG Road, okay, you would end up reaching in Kothinur with that one degree deviation. Okay. And if you are aiming for moon from Earth, with that one degree deviation, you would miss the moon by 7,000 miles. Okay. Very often, when we talk about good and bad leaders, it is not that overnight people become bad. It is this small deviation. Okay. It is only evident after a longer walk with the Lord that how far people have moved away from the truth. Okay. And we have enough examples even now, great people, okay, uh, who have done great things for the Lord, but they have moved far away from the call. Okay. Just one example that I would like to point out this morning. If you read uh, the, the letter to Colossae, okay, in the closing remarks, Paul mentions two names. Okay, he mentions Luke and he mentions Demas. Okay, uh, the letter to Colossae was written in AD 60. Okay, come six years later, Paul again writes the second letter to Timothy. Okay, over there again, Demas is mentioned, but he's mentioned in the wrong light. Okay, Demas, the one who has deserted him. Okay. And has gone after the world. Okay. What happened okay, between the six years period? Okay. He was with him, he was with Paul, he was with Luke. Okay. But the small compromises that we make, we see that over a period of six years, that Demas has completely deserted Paul. Even as we talk about good and bad church leaders, okay, each of us. Uh, are susceptible to fall on either side. Okay. All of us need to have this course correction. Okay. When a space shuttle is sent into the mission, space mission, okay, it travels for days together. And the people who are controlling the space shuttle, they constantly do something that is called as course correction. So that the shuttle it hits the target. Okay. Isn't it necessary for you and me 
to constantly do that course correction if we do not have that reference in christ okay even we are prone to error and just in closing uh, this verse uh, that i would like to read okay this is found in acts chapter 17 verse 11 now the berian jews were of more noble character than those in thessalonica for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what paul said was true to see if what paul said was true okay when the great apostle paul spoke the berian jews didn't believe they went back they went home they checked whether what this person was speaking was true or not okay so each of us okay our life needs to be anchored on the truth of jesus christ and that should be our guideline and every time we move ahead in life we need to constantly recalibrate our life and see whether we are following the same path or else even we can fall away like demas okay who was with the great apostle paul and he had deserted him 6 years later so with this uh, thoughts i would like to close uh, we will move ahead into a time of discussion uh, we have few questions and now we can break into the breakout session